So let's take a look at what happens when in a browser you type www.google.com. So you go to your browser and you do http www.google.com. So first take a look at the protocol. We are using the HTTP protocol and that happens to be an application layer protocol. The user directly interacts with this protocol. Okay, so the computer does not know where google.com is being served. So there is a web server somewhere and the computer or the user, uh, they don't know where google.com is being served. So what uh, the browser is going to do is issue a DNS request, a domain name service request for www.google.com and without going into the details of what happens in DNS, let's assume that the DNS uh, protocol returns the IP address of google.com. So let's assume the IP address of uh, google.com is um, let's let's take something random, right? So let's go for uh, 77889911. So this let's let's assume this as the IP address of google.com. Okay. So what does HTTP do? So HTTP, um, you know, is 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 comprised of a few kinds of methods like. Um, a, a get request, a post request, um, put request, delete request, things like that. But here we're trying to get the home page of google.com. So we are going to create a get message. And in the message, we'd say, give us the home page of google.com, right? So the resource we are looking for is somewhere at the root of google.com and let's not get into the details of all of that so the get message will have a few things which would say okay we are going to we, we are intending to get google.com and this is the message okay so a message gets created by http in the browser and all of this happens in the application layer now what takes this message from the application layer and does whatever magic it does through the networks and takes it to google.com well a few things do happen inside your computer itself right so this message is pushed on to the transport layer right so the transport layer what it does is it adds a few things right so let's just say this is our message inside right so the http message is right here and TCP adds a few things like the the most important thing that it adds is um, a port number, right? So it adds a source port number and a destination port number. Okay, so let's just say the source port number is one two three four five, and the destination port number is going to be eighty. How do we know it is eighty? Well, the HTTP protocol by default uses 80 and, and uh, the web server understands HTTP, right? So this request is going to google.com and that server is running at port 80. So that is going to be our destination port number because we have not specifically given a different port in the string here, HTTP www.google.com we have not given any port number so the default is 80 and the 1234 is a random port okay the browser selects a port for you so the tcp adds a lot of other important things also but we don't have to worry about that at this level okay then this gets pushed down to a lower layer the network layer right um, and you have the HTTP message. Then you have the TCP thing outside that, right? The port numbers, 
TCP is right here and then IP adds its own thing here right so it basically adds the source IP address and the destination IP address source IP address might be your whatever let's say you have BSNL and BSNL has given you an IP address of um, let's just say 22334455 that's the IP that BSNL has given you and the destination IP is what DNS has given us and we can have that as 77889911 okay IP adds a few other things also but the most important part at this level of the class is this this then gets pushed down to let's just say you're using wired ethernet and an ethernet frame gets created and the entire IP packet is put inside that and this IP packet internally has TCP and then that has the HTTP message inside that so this entire process from top to the bottom um, and, and and all of these you know, steps what we do is it's called as encapsulation so you take the get message you encapsulate inside um, the TCP segment and then this TCP segment is put inside an IP packet and the IP packet is put inside an ethernet frame right so at the application layer putting it as al here things the packets are usually called as messages at the transport layer the packets are usually called as segments at the network layer we just call them as packets At the physical layer, we usually call them frames. At the application layer, the unit of addressing. So, what do we want to get? Google.com, www.google.com. So, so those addresses are usually called as URIs. Okay. At the transport layer, what specific numbers did we add to the packet? Well, we added port numbers like the 80 being the destination port and 12345 being the source port. So at the transport layer, ports are used as addresses. At the network layer, we add IP addresses okay so IP addresses are or the addresses we use at the network layer at the physical layer we use hardware addresses or they're also called as MAC addresses media access control addresses okay so the application layer we call the packets as messages and we use URIs as addresses. The transport layer, we use segments as packets. At the network layer, we use packets as such and the physical layer, we use frames. And we use ports as addresses and transport layer, IP addresses at the network layer and hardware addresses or MAC addresses at the physical layer. Okay, so now what happens? Now this frame goes on the wire to your router in your house. Okay, so the router receives it at its physical layer, right? It receives a frame. Okay, and by the way, I forgot to tell you that at the physical layer here we add two addresses right one is the source hardware address and we also add the destination hardware address so the source hardware address is going to be the hardware address of your computer's network card and the destination hardware address is going to be the hardware address of the uh, let's just say the BSNL router in your house okay this is different from how the 
IP addresses work. The source IP address is your IP address, um, but the destination IP address is that of Google.com, right? But 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 here, the source hardware address is going to be your computer's hardware address. The destination hardware address is that is is going to be that of your BSNL router. Once your BSNL router gets the frame, it is going to verify that if it is the intended uh, recipient of the frame, then once it verifies that, it is going to remove and throw away the Ethernet frame uh, encapsulation, right? So it decapsulates and it will get the IP packet inside that, okay? And then that is where it will stop. It, it, it has no business in knowing whether it is TCP, UDP, or it is HTTP at the application layer, nothing. It will not decapsulate up to that. It will not decapsulate beyond the network layer. Okay. It will stop at the network layer because it only cares about IP addresses. It is going to see that the destination IP address is 77889911. And this IP address does not belong to the home network. There are no computers in your house that have an IP address that matches this. So it will then decide that this packet is supposed to go outside the house. Okay. So it is going to send it to the BSNL office. So before sending it, what will it do? It will take this IP packet and then it will encapsulate again inside an Ethernet or whatever kind of technology you are using to connect your BSNL router to the BSNL office. It might be optical fiber, which uses its own framing technology. So whatever the physical layer protocol is, it is going to encapsulate that IP packet in that kind of a frame. And when it encapsulates that into a new frame, so it's going to put this IP packet into a new hardware frame, right in the physical layer, the source address is going to be the source hardware address is going to be the BSNL router's hardware address. The destination hardware address is going to be the, the address of the router in the BSNL's office, right? Which is basically connected to your house. Okay. And then it is going to be sent. Okay. I'm going to erase everything here. You can pause and take notes if you want to. So in your house, the packet went from application layer to transport layer to network layer to physical layer then it went to the physical layer of your router this is basically your pc this is basically your router uh, let me get rid of this okay and your router then takes it up to the network layer and then the packet again comes back to the physical layer of the router. Then it goes to the physical layer of the BSNL office router. From there it goes to the network layer of that router. That router then routes it to some other place. Let's just say from Bhubaneswar it goes to Kolkata. Right? It comes back to the physical layer of the BSNL router in Bhubaneswar and then basically maybe it is connected directly to Kolkata right from physical layer it goes to the physical layer of let's just say the uh, Kolkata router right goes to the network layer that then checks okay it's going to go to Google okay sure let's send this to Mumbai okay then it's connected to Mumbai and that way maybe all the way it goes after after a lot of routers it goes to the one in Google, right? So that physical layer router gets it. It goes to the network layer, right? And then from the network layer, it goes to the physical layer of that router there. And then this connects to the computer that is hosting Google.com. So that will have, you will have basically um, the computer there, right? And that will have its... Uh, its physical layer then it will send it to its network layer and that will check that oh, okay it's my ip address okay cool then it will then send it to the tcp um basically the transport layer protocol right it'll check oh this is port 80 this is the first time that it is going to be decapsulated until the 
transport layer because none of the routers in the middle were they were not interested in that okay they were not interested in the transport layer that the, the end computer right that was now that is now interested in tcp so it says okay port 80 cool i'm going to send it to the web server because well many processes might be using transport layer protocols right so okay and then uh, i'm going to remove the tcp stuff then we will have the application layer basically the http stuff there right and um, the web server is going to then take over and see okay this is a get request for the home page of google okay i'll get it from the hard drive package a response and then you know the response is going to be an http response message from the application layer where google is running it's going to then package it into a tcp packet and the the destination port there is going to be one two three four five because that was the source port in the request and the response that is going to be the destination port and the source port in that case is going to be 80 right that is how tcp will add the addresses and then it will send it to the network layer where ip addresses will be added like another layer of encapsulation is going to happen right and then in, in 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 that case the the source ip address is going to be that of google's ip address because that was the destination in the request side on the response side that is going to be the source ip address the destination ip address is that of um your 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 house okay wherever your your uh, desktop is running it's it's that desktop's ip address is going to be the destination ip address here and that is going to be sent to um the physical layer the physical layer will then send it to the nearest router that will then check okay this is going to go to this person's ip okay this is in india or wherever and look at its routing tables it will then forward it to the appropriate router that router might be connected to multiple router a particular router can be connected to so many routers okay and uh, it will then forward it that will again forward some somebody else and slowly it will come to you after a few hops it will come to you then you will decapsulate the response from your physical layer to network layer to tcp and ultimately your browser at the application layer will be able to understand the response the http response and it will render it for you this is just a small overview right as long as you understand the concept of encapsulation and decapsulation the concept uh, the fact that there are four layers in the tcp ip stack application layer some protocols are http smtp dns and things like that then transport layer tcp udp are the two prominent protocols there network layer the internet protocol ip is is basically the most protocol the most important protocol there then we have the physical layer where we have protocols like ethernet right at the application layer we call packets as messages the transport layer we call them as segments in the network layer we call them as packets in the physical layer we call them as frames in the application layer we use uris as addresses transport layer ports network layer ip addresses physical layer mac or hardware addresses right the routers they will help the packet right to get routed they will forward it to a router after looking at a routing table okay so and they're only interested in ip addresses so they will only decapsulate the physical layer packet or the frame and then they will get the ip packet right then they look at the ip address they will then put it into a new physical frame and then they will send it to the next hop the next router that's all they, they don't care whether it's tcp udp http they will not decapsulate until that point they will only decapsulate until the network layer I, it will only be decapsulated to the transport layer and to the application layer above that at the end wherever it is supposed to go to at the destination only it will be decapsulated if you understand this much then the purpose of this video is is served okay thank you